The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. There's a scripture in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. The Bible says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So in other words, faith is tangible, yet you can't see it. But it's, and it would be evidence because faith moves mountains. Faith changes situations. Faith in what? Faith in Jesus Christ. Fear is the opposite of faith. Matter of fact, when you have fear in your life, then you're lacking in faith. Your, your focus is no longer on the, the victory you're about to accomplish, you're about to uh, experience, but you begin to dwell on the negative. And, and it causes you, to, it brings unbelief. Fear will capture you. It will hold you prisoner. Feed your faith and starve your doubts. So let's go there in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7 and 9. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Amen? Amen. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. But be thou partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Jesus Christ before the world began. The devil, what a Romans chapter 8, the Bible says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. There's a situation also when persecution comes against the church, against you believers, we have a tendency, if you listen to the noise, if you listen to the lies, you might find yourself concerned or even in fear. You see the, the, the preacher that was attacked the other day down in Australia, wasn't it? The, the, the uh, bishop up there preaching. A guy came down and just started stabbing him right in the pulpit. We've heard of preachers been uh, attacked and shot and preachers' wives attacked and different things. And then I thought about Freedom Fellowship. I thought, man, you don't really want to try that around here. Right? Hey, no, that's not going to work. But anyway, you know, the devil, though, wants to bring fear. If he can do that to one church or one gathering of believers, he tries to spread that fear across the entire church world, trying to make people afraid. You have nothing to fear, as I believe it was um, uh, that Franklin Delano Roosevelt said it, and there's nothing to fear but fear itself. The only thing that can stop you from going forward in the Lord is if you allow fear to take over your faith. But I'm here to tell you right now that without faith it's impossible to please God and with faith all things are possible to them that believe can you say amen and so we go to first John chapter 4 verse 18 and the Bible says there is no fear in love but perfect love cast is out fear because fear hath torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love now understand something. God is love, and, and God is also light, and in him there's no darkness at all. And them that are born of God are born of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But this love passes all understanding. This is a deeper love than any of us in humanity really can understand. Uh, we have love for our wives and husbands. We have love for our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. We have love for our community, love for our country, love for our neighbors. We love a lot. There's a lot of things we love. But the love I'm talking about is that the creator of the universe would unbosom his son that sat at the right hand of his throne and came, become his lower than the angels to give his life on the cross only to raise three days later with the keys of hell and death and victory for humanity. His name is Jesus, Jesus, Yeshua, the son of the living God. Proverbs 9 verse 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So there's different types of fear. There's the fear 
from your parents when you were growing up that you didn't do right, okay? There's fear of my wife if I don't do right. There's fears, okay, if you're in the army and they give an order. There's certain fears that we have are not fears of lack of faith, but it's actually a fear of respect, a fear of wisdom, a fear of understanding authority and responsibility. I fear the Lord, not because he hates me, but I, I believe when he says something, he means it. And that is to my benefit. Because what if we served a God that was wishy-washy, who sometimes said this and sometimes said that, and other times he tried this and other times he'd do that, and you wouldn't know where you stood. And so we need a God that we can count on. Our God is solid. Our God cannot lie. It's impossible for him. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he changeth not. It's something good about being close to God. The closer you get to God, the closer God will get to you. The more faith you build, feed your faith. Faith comes from what? Hearing the word of the Lord. How can they hear unless there's a preacher? How can he preach except God send them or call them? The Bible tells us that. We need to hear the word. We need to read the word. You need to be uh, absorbed by the word. And the more of God's word in your heart, the stronger you become as a Christian. The stronger your faith is. The Bible says, Psalms 27, verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Let me see that again. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When you know deep down in your heart that you're a servant of God and that he is moving in your life and that it's in him that we live, move, and have our very being. And you know, I enjoy life. You enjoy life. We want everything that, that God's got for us, but I'm still looking beyond this world. I'm looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. The faith I have now, I've seen a glimpse of it. Hallelujah. I uh, know I've come close enough to death that I understand that there's somebody going to see me across Chile, Jordan when it comes. Hallelujah. Woo! Praise the Lord. We've, we, we, we understand to live is Christ, to die is gain. Our faith is in nothing more than the power of the resurrection and that Jesus Christ will carry us all the way. Think of the nation of Israel under the attack it's under, the oppression upon the people. They're economically, physically, mentally, they're challenged. And every morning they wake up, every neighbor in, their, in the neighborhood of the Middle East hates them. And every time they turn on the television, the United Nations has another resolution for them. And everybody wants to take what little bit of sliver of land they've got. And they've been through hell and back and then again. And yet this resolve within this people is beyond comprehension. They just keep going and going and going. What's driving that? It's the faith they have in God. It's the faith in the Torah that it is the Word of God. It's a faith that, that soon the Messiah will come. It's their faith that no matter what comes their way, they will overcome it, not because they can, but because He will, praise God. That same faith applies within us that are born again in the church of the living God. That same resolve must be in us, that no matter what comes against us, greater is He that's in you than he that's in the world. We are conquerors. We're more than conquerors through Christ that strengthens us. If God be for us, who can be against us? Can you say amen? And the Bible tells us, the Lord is my light. Psalms 27, 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came up upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. And though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me in this I will be confident the devil hates praying warriors uh, when I was a teenager I would well, I, about 18 19 year old or so I love the Lord but you know I'm 18 or 19 years old I just want to do my thing and still love Jesus I remember going home every day ever, ever so often walking into the front door we had a door that opened into the kitchen I'd open that door and step in 
As soon as my foot hit the kitchen floor, I'd hear in the back bedroom of the house, oh Lord, save my family. Lord, lift them up. Put a hedge around them. I just freeze. Then I knew it was coming. Oh Lord, and call Paul to preach the gospel. And I'd say, don't do that, mom, please. Because the last thing I wanted to do was be a preacher. I saw what had happened to the ones before me and the struggles and the trials and the fight and the scratching and at the end of the day, the great victories they had. We dread sometimes the confrontation, but we love the victory. And you can't have a victory without a battle and you can't have a battle without an enemy. So if you want to have victory in Jesus, get ready because you're going to have to duke it out. My, some of us want to go 15 rounds with the devil, but Jesus told me, why are you doing that for? I knocked him out in the first round. Put your faith in God. Put your faith in Christ. Don't ever look to the right or to the left. Know that he's there with you. And David knew it when he ate, when he, when, when he was attacked and he killed the lion and killed the bear. And when he stood there in the field taking care of the sheep, but when the Lord even called him to take on Goliath of Gath, to take him down, David wrote a Psalms, Psalms 1. He knew where his faith come. He knew where his strength came. And here's what it says. Read it with me together. Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. This is the word of the Lord. God knew, David knew, and every, per every believer knows that the more of God you get, the more of the word you get, the more of it you soak in, the stronger you are. Satan is a liar. He's a deceiver. He's the accuser of the brethren. He is the one who wants to bring doubt and disbelief. And, and he, he loves to confuse people and to keep people off balance. And he does it by spreading lies and planning thoughts and creating doubt which then causes folks to recalculate and think it through again. But if the word of the Lord is a light unto your feet and a lamp unto your path, if the more of the word of God you put in your heart, you will see better because the, the word is never going to fail. The word is never, ever, ever going to fail us. If you stand on it, you can count it rest assured, you can lean on what have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. It's true that the more of God we get, the stronger we get. Think about Daniel for a minute. Think about Job for a minute. Think about the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Think about Esther. Think about how each one of them faced a test of unbelievable courage would be required, life or death, and they stood on their faith in God. Daniel... Daniel had been stolen. It wasn't his fault. He wasn't a pagan worshiper in Jerusalem. He was a faithful man who prayed three times a day. But he got swept up in the Babylonian empire who came and take down the temple and took away a bunch of the people. And, and there he was stuck in a place called Babylon where there he was under the, uh, under the uh, control of the king, under the control of that empire, which was a pagan worshiping empire. And he knew he was supposed to eat certain foods, but he wouldn't eat it because the word had told him if he, as long as he stayed kosher, he would stay 
strong in the Lord. And so he did. He knew that if he kept praying, his faith would continue to rise in him and that God would uh, use him. And even though he was a Hebrew in the land of Babylon, he rose to the third president of the kingdom. Why? Because he was a man you could count on, you could trust. He was good to his word and the king saw it. So that should be good enough. But no, there we came a decree that for 30 days, people were not to pray to any other God, but to the king. No other God, because people had lots of gods there. But Daniel got up every morning and opened that window toward Jerusalem, and he prayed that prayer, and I believe he even prayed louder. And at noon, he did it again. And in the evening, he did it again. And he did it day after day, just like before the decree. You see, man's laws don't change my faith. Oh, come on, nobody wants me to preach here. I mean, but seriously, what happens is we trust everything else but God. God seems to be last on the list who we go to in desperation. But you want to know how good God is? That even when we wait till last to go to him, he's still waiting for you. Woo! Because think about it. If he, was, if he was mad, if he got jealous, if he said, here you go again, you're gonna try, you're gonna try this, you're gonna try that, and then you go come around to me and then let's just see if I'm gonna be there. That ain't how God is. God's love is everlasting. It endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. Daniel kept praying and all of a sudden, the word got back to the king that Daniel was praying. And he said, king, there's a man in your kingdom that is disregarding your ordinances and your laws. He keeps praying to his God. And you said, if anybody's caught doing that, they're to be thrown into the den of lions. The king said, that's right, bring him in, whoever it is. And when they brought him in, it was Daniel, the most loyal, most trustworthy man he had in the whole kingdom. And so the king said, oh my Lord, is there a way to get out of this? I've been, I've been tricked, I've messed up. I didn't recognize, I didn't realize and then the Bible tells us that he, he, he couldn't hardly sleep all. When, when the nighttime came, they threw Daniel in. And all night long, that king just wrestled the bed. Have you ever wrestled the bed? And have you ever then stopped and prayed and it got all right? Sometimes we'll fight all night long when a simple prayer would have fixed it. Daniel was in the den. A den has to have at least 40 lions, so I don't know how many were down there. They usually don't feed them as often as they should so that they're good and hungry when they throw somebody in. So Daniel's tossed in there. But God sent an angel and shut the lion's mouths. I think Daniel probably looked around and saw these little kitties and said, uh, nice little kitty. Laid right down probably and went to sleep because he had faith in God. But the king was so distraught. And when the morning came, the king got up at the break of day and he went down to the, to the den. And he said, somebody roll away that stone, uh, clear a path, uh, open this thing up. And he hollered real loud, oh, Daniel, has your God whom you serve continually, is he able to deliver thee? And all of a sudden there was a silence and out of the darkness and out of the dampness and out of the dungeon of hell come a voice that said, oh, King, live forever hallelujah that king said that's enough get him out of there they got him out of there and oh do you want you don't want to be the guys that accused daniel every one of them their families their children were cast into the same den and they ate them before they could touch the ground they were waiting you see for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, there is fear that's good. It's the fear of the Lord. But the fear of the devil is a lie and will de try to destroy your faith. You need to sometimes, when you're facing a problem, trust God, trust his word. When he said that he'll supply every need according to his riches and glory, believe him. Believe him, because he will. Let's read again. Let's go to Psalms 3, because sometimes... You will have enemies in this world. Sometimes people will just for some reason decide to come against you. It could be family, it could be foe. It could be friends that went astray. It could be business partners, it could be some neighbors, who knows? But David knew this and he began as, as the enemies were against him, the armies were against him. Even Saul was trying to kill him. Let's read what it says in Psalms 3. Lord. How art they increased that trouble me? 
Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there's no help for him in God. Saleh. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I lay me down and slept. I awaken, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone, and thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Can you say amen? All right, all right, are you serious? I mean, I mean, that's what I'm saying. You can't have fear and faith. Work it in your heart at the same time. It's like a balance. The more fear you have, the less faith you'll have, okay? But if you build your faith, and how do you build your faith? Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of the Lord. And so as the more you feed your faith, you'll be starving your doubts to death. That fear has to go. And that's what David was saying there, you know, toward the end of the sermon here when, when uh, I was reading from Psalms chapter three. Look at that again, verse six. I will not be afraid of 10,000s of people that have set themselves against me round about. I will not be afraid of 10,000s of people. In other words, it doesn't matter what the circumstance is, cancer, heart condition, a death in the family, uh, a financial uh, ca catastrophic event maybe. I mean, there's things that happen in our lives that are not predicted. But, we, but what you can do is be prepared that no matter what you deal with, your faith will rise, folks. Let faith arise. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemous. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise 